We won't be needing you for this next job. Feel free to look for work elsewhere. Fine by me. That's how I like it. No contract, no obligation. Figured you'd say that. Took your sweet time. Uh, uh. Psych. <sighs> Are you gonna let me in so we can talk in private? Guess I'll get right to the point then. Huh. What have you got there? An apology for not getting you on the mission. Uh. Or not. What do you think it is? A proposition. Nailed it in one. Gonna have to ask you to keep all this a secret from the others, though. It's a personal matter. Something I need to sort out tonight. Tonight? Tonight. You and me, together. I want you to come with me to the Sector 7 plate. I'll give you the details on the way. That's fine by me, but don't you have a pretty big day ahead of you? I do, but if I don't deal with this now, it's only gonna get harder. Anyway, I can count on you, can't I? Hmm. Oh. A down payment. And we have our first summon materia. We didn't really get this until leaving Midgar in the first game, but of course we're not going to leave Midgar, so whatever. Doubt we'll be back before morning, in case you were planning on traveling light. Make sure you've got everything you need before we leave. I'll wait here. This entire thing is new to this remake. This uh, sort of subplot with Jesse and asking you to go on another mission with her this didn't happen. In the original game, you just sort of got plucked up and sent on the next mission. You agreed to it in the bar, and then you went to sleep, and you woke up, and then you went on the mission. So, of course, there's a lot more games, so they gotta have more stuff, and it's better to do something like this rather than just make the dungeons longer. Plus, I always felt like the other members of Avalanche, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse, were sort of underutilized a little bit in the original game. They were there for a little while, and then, spoiler alert, they died tragically when Shinra dropped the plate on their heads. So, you add more to them, you give them some extra character here. Particularly Jesse, they're putting a lot of effort into turning Jesse into a character. Then you have Biggs and Wedge, and they're getting less, less attention here. Wedge's character development seems to be that he's the fat guy. Biggs has even less. I mean, Biggs doesn't feel much more like a character than he did in the uh, in the original game. He's not, so far at least from what I've seen, he's not important to the story really at all. He's just sort of a character that serves a specific function, and that's to be a member of Avalanche. You all set? Awesome. Meet me at the station after dark. Don't be late. <laughs> it's just another job. As much as Cloud feels like he wants to move on and not really get caught up in this whole thing here, he seems to keep getting drawn in. Now, Barrett had sent him on his way. Didn't want him anything to do with him right there. I guess he doesn't trust him or he doesn't want to pay him or whatever, but the other characters still feel like they need him. Huh? Huh? Tough break. They changed the times. Last train's already left. Which is why we borrowed these bikes. Need a lift to the plate? How did you guess? Easy. You've been acting weird. Like, talking about one thing when you're obviously thinking about something else. Yeah, and don't get me started on all that pep. All right, I'll give you that. But how did you know I wanted to head topside? Was I talking in my sleep? What else did I say? No, we just figured you wanted to see your parents, that's all. Nailed it, huh? Yep, 
Right on the head. So, seeing as we don't have any family of our own, how about you let us be a part of yours for a bit? You know, spread the wealth. Hmm. Are your parents still around? Huh? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay then, guess you're all invited. Here's to awkward family reunions. Yeah! <laughs> I take it you boys have your brand spanking new IDs? Yes, ma'am. Then let's lay down some rubber. Crank that frog. Okay, you got it. You hear me? Yeah. Just so you know, I'm not going plate side for the reason they think I am. Look, you saw the way the reactor went up. It was huge, right? Because of all the Mako. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. That was wishful thinking. Deep down, I know it was my fault. I used a more powerful blasting agent than the directions called for. It had nothing to do with the Mako. Let's say you're right. So what? I'm planning on using a weaker blasting agent this time. But? Since I can't get in touch with my supplier, our only option is to loot a warehouse owned by Shinra. Shinra? Good luck with that. With your help, we won't need luck. ID scan! Ready? So far, so good. Alright, here comes the hard part. That is? The fake IDs may have held up, but from this point on, if we get pinged by a scam... They'll come for us. Yeah, what he said. Oh man. Just like that? No need to worry. We've got Cloud, remember? Hey, you do know how to drive, right? Soldiers get mandatory training. Well then, you gonna take my breath away? Make my head spin with your amazing skills? Don't blame me if you get sick. <laughs> I wonder what exactly was Jessie's plan here. She was going to take the trains to take the train up to the plate and then go do whatever she has to go and do up there. But they were going to take the last train to get to the upper plate. How the hell were they planning on getting back down? Hmm. Anyway, this whole motorcycle chase thing was something that happened in the original game, but it didn't happen here, because remember, this mission didn't exist in the original game. It happened, spoiler alert, much later in the game, where um, you're escaping from the Shinra building. After all of the massacre and whatnot happened there, you hopped on a motorcycle, everybody else hopped in a pickup truck, and you drove out a window and escaped the city. Cloud riding on a motorcycle with his big ass sword hanging out the side, fought off the Shinra guards that attempted to keep them from escaping. And it sort of played out the same way that this did. Of course, a lot more primitive. Cloud zips around and he's hacking at him with a sword. And you got to sort of protect Cloud's health and you got to protect the... got to protect the other members of the party, which aren't able to defend themselves in the pickup truck. And this, I guess, uh, Biggs and Wedge are... They have guns and they're shooting back, but really it moving to intercept. I can assume that later on in the game that the same thing is going to happen. We're gonna be riding the motorcycle and performing the same kind of a mini game while escaping from the Shinra building. So it makes sense that the developers who spent probably quite a bit of time going and developing this game mechanic and all that would want to go and include it in more than one part of the game. Now, although in the original game, the uh, this motorcycle portion was really only mandatory in the one spot, you could at the Gold Saucer go and play an arcade game, which did the same thing over again. And I played it a few times there because it is like an interesting little mix-up. It's not especially fun, but it's nice little distraction and something else that you can do. The minigame itself was also quite different than what you see in other parts of the game because Final Fantasy VII 
the original one that is, was released on the PlayStation 1, and the PlayStation 1 was rather limited in terms of what kind of graphical performance it could push, so the game relied on static 2D backgrounds, which was pretty damn awesome, and then put 3D characters over top of them. Now, the 3D characters weren't detailed or anything like that, so it didn't, the characters didn't look particularly good, but it was how they got around that technical limitation. But then you got to the motorcycle portion of the game, and things changed there because, I mean, well, how do you do something like this eh, with a static 2D background? Well, you can. At least not without changing the perspective and all that pretty significantly. So, the entire thing was rendered in 3D. So it's like, okay, this is pretty different from the rest of the game. I mean, it was a snowboarding game and there was a submarine game and all that stuff was in 3D. And developing all of that must have taken so much effort that they're like, okay, we got to use this in more than one place. The original game, it was like Gold Saucer. And this, well, we're never going to hit Gold Saucer. So, put a couple parts in the game where we ride the motorcycle. Can't say I blame it for doing that. Seems like a pretty good use of resources because this would have taken quite a bit of effort to develop. Okay, now this is something uh, that I honestly didn't expect when I started the game. That was a new character. Now, of course, we've seen other new characters. Marl over at the, at the apartment building was, of course, a new character created for the remake. But she's coming across like she's going to be a rather insubstantial character. Somebody who's just sort of fleshing out the beginning portions of the game in the Sector 7 slums. This seems like something a little bit more substantial. Part of that we too, you know. We made it! Woohoo! Top side! Keep going till we hit the station? No, head straight for the warehouse. Our magical ride is almost at an end. Why are you talking like we're not here? Because you're not. Clearly we are. In the original game, Jessie didn't put much effort into hiding her attraction to Cloud. And of course, spoiler alert again, she dies before anything could really develop out of that, so nothing really comes from that. But in this game, she's much more openly flirtatious with him. Now, of course, I'm going to assume that she dies before anything happens there as well, and Cloud doesn't really seem to be, have any, want anything to do with her, really. He's part of this mission and all that, but he doesn't return her affections. Now, he didn't in the original game, either. He even ignored her advances for the most part. Didn't even seem to notice, perhaps. I guess maybe it's because he doesn't want to have any attachments to anybody. Yeah, 
Well, this is a sudden change here, though. We have an additional character who is added to the game, and more of a substantial character, different than we had seen with Morrow. Now, this is a sort of clearly coming across as a kind of secondary antagonist, which, thanks to the fact that they're stretching out the beginning portion of this game, it was going to be pretty clear to me that they didn't have anybody like this that they could use from the original game. Of course, you had a bunch of other secondary antagonists, such as the Turks, which won't appear until later. Pretty far into this game, if they appear when I think they will appear. They had, say, like Hojo and Hot Digger, who you don't see. You had President Shinra, and you had Rufus, who we won't see for a while. But nobody to really jump up in your face and give you trouble. Sephiroth shouldn't really have any appearance in this. Of course, he won't fight you or anything like that. There was Genova, which we were not going to see until deep into this game. So they had to have some kind of a character to be a secondary antagonist, to always get up in your face and to always be giving you trouble. And they are sort of addressing a kind of a deficiency with the original game that I felt like was that the soldier organization, which is supposed to be this super elite group of soldiers working for Shinra that Cloud was allegedly part of and all that. And you encounter some of them in random battles, but you don't really see any soldiers as characters. Now we have this Roke guy, who's apparently a third class soldier, who, even though he's one of the lower ranks, he's still supposed to be like super elite. Had enough? Don't be absurd. As if I could ever grow tired of your company! Naughty naughty! Until one of our flames is forever extinguished, our heads will never rest! Ha <laughs> <Fight> for me! <laughs> Room! <laughs> oh ho ho! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's push it past the red line! Jesse, take over. Well, well, well. I do believe this round is yours. <laughs> Maybe next time we can keep it just between the two of us. Maybe. <laughs> Until we meet again, my friend! We did it! Go team! Don't get too excited. Reinforcements are hot on our trail. Pass the test. What test? Driving. Did more than just pass. Not really. You made it by the skin of your teeth, if we're being honest. Whatever. Ah, I bet you held back because I was with you. Didn't want you to fall. So now I'm too weak to stay on a bike? Huh? Huh? <sighs> just hold on tight, will you? What? I might be falling after all. Mm -hmm. Psych? <laughs> oh. oh, would you look at that? It's the end of the ride. Go on foot from here. Don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. Hey, did these things leave a mark? <laughs> they got you pretty good. Oh, and I'm running on fumes. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll top you up soon enough. Now let's roll. Huh. 
Baroque is coming across like he's an obnoxious ass. Now, I guess if somebody's supposed to be that elite of a soldier, and he is used to having certain freedoms and to be able to do whatever he wants, he would kind of sort of get bored with life and he's going around acting like such an obnoxious ass. Why? Because he can. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see him later, and I'll talk more about him when the time comes. We'll be chatting Mom up in the kitchen, so don't even bother being quiet. There's no way she'll ever hear you. Dad'll be in there, but it's okay. 